I'd like to share an image with you that our own Rufus Walsh has developed. It is our best effort at visually capturing this way of a disciple. You can see it on your screen now as we talk together. The whole thing is centered on the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. Our lives are built on that gospel. The six elements or markers of a disciple extend outward from this gospel. Love God, love neighbor, love self, living God's new creation in community as a witness. And then you'll notice this spiral that goes in and out. We're always moving around that spiral in both directions, closer in to the center, which is the gospel, and then back out to the edges where we encounter world and culture and the messiness of life. It's kind of like breathing in and out, in and out. There are some steps along the way which are repeated over and over again. They become entry points for a life of discipleship and touch points for keeping us grounded in what God is doing in Jesus. They are observing, questioning, engaging, exploring, and living. These are adapted from a well-known model of learning in the world of education. When a person encounters something new, such as the gospel, he or she will often move in and out of these discrete touch points trying to figure things out. There is observing. We're watching to see what we can learn, paying attention to others who may already claim to have accepted this new idea. We pay attention to what these folks do. We try to understand how things work. We ask questions. Why does this new thing matter? We're questioning why should the good news of Jesus matter to me? If God is so good and loving, we ask why is the whole world in turmoil? Why are people suffering like never before? We have all sorts of very good questions which need to be asked. Very few of them have clear answers, and that's okay. It's part of the process. We are questioning, and we need to question. In questioning, we often begin to engage with the new thing. If it is the gospel of Jesus Christ, perhaps we talk to some Christian people to see how this gospel works in their life. Maybe we see some people doing something good in the name of Jesus, and we decide to roll up our sleeves and help. We haven't made any commitments or decisions. We just want to see what this thing looks like up close and personal. We might even visit a church or make a donation just to see what it feels like. In time, we begin exploring more deeply. Our questions need attention. We realize we'd better do some reading and thorough investigation, especially if this new thing seems valid and important. In our exploration, perhaps there is some validation that this new thing is real and important and potentially life-changing for me, for my family. In the case of the gospel, maybe you take a class on doctrine and theology, or maybe you start serving with these Christ followers on a regular basis. Maybe worship is the place where you do your exploring. People are all different, and we all have different approaches to our exploring. In any case... There comes a time when we make a conscious choice to begin living this new thing. The six elements or markers of discipleship become very, very important. They are the things we do on a daily basis. They are our way of being in the world. We're hungry to find community of other Christ followers to help us, and life starts to look a little different. Morning prayer time, life group meeting on Tuesday night, deep concern about the hurts of people in our community, and a desire to be part of what God is doing in Jesus. The Holy Spirit is working at every place along this journey, encouraging, wooing, helping, sustaining. These five touch points, observing, questioning, engaging, exploring, and living, are not a linear process. People move all around and might be doing two or three things at once, but early on in encountering the gospel, most of us find ourselves unintentionally doing just one or two of these at a time. There is a temptation to think that once you get to living, you've arrived. Well, that's not exactly right. We continue to encounter the gospel of Jesus even as we follow Jesus. We continue to observe, question, engage, explore, and live for the rest of our lives. The gospel is always presenting us with new challenges and fresh ways of seeing the world. In time, our learning processes become less discreet and defined and more integrated with each other. We can observe, question, engage, explore, and live all at the same time. We're still doing these things in very concrete ways. It's a little bit like uh, Shannon and the Biscuits. 
My wife comes from a long line of Appalachian biscuit makers. The skill is handed down from one generation to another. Now, 15 years ago, when we were first married, Shannon was an apprentice biscuit maker. Her mom had to come to our house for Shannon to make biscuits. There was a lengthy preparation. Pages of notes were reviewed. Ingredients were carefully laid out. Shannon's mother stood by to answer questions and assist. Shannon followed the process meticulously, carefully moving and documenting, documenting one step, moving to another. It took two hours to get some biscuits in my house. Over time, Shannon became more proficient. Her mom could, sim could simply be on the telephone. The recipe notes were reduced to a single page, and the process, still quite dramatic, just took about an hour. Last week, Shannon made biscuits in 20 minutes while holding a five-week-old baby on her hip and they're entertaining a three-year-old. No notes, no mama, and no drama. She can substitute ingredients, adjust the size of the batch on the fly, clean the kitchen, and do laundry while she goes. It's all the same process. She still analyzes the results with a critical eye and is rarely satisfied, but she makes a better biscuit than her mama or her grandmama. She has internalized this continuous learning process about biscuit making. She might not need the 47-step recipe anymore, but she'll be the first to tell you there is a recipe, and she'll always be learning and getting better at making those biscuits. Our learning processes are like that in nearly every part of life. Christian discipleship is not unlike Shannon making biscuits. There is always some complication, always some room for improvement, and always the chance of a bad batch we have to throw out. By the grace of God and through the help of the Holy Spirit, we are also always learning and getting better. Take just a few moments now and consider this picture we have before us. You see the way of a disciple, the six elements of discipleship centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see our learning processes spiraling in and out of that gospel. How does this help you think about an intentional life of discipleship? And as a follow-up question, how might this help you be able to talk with a friend or a neighbor about what it means to follow Jesus? Take just a few moments and talk about those things. Thank you.